In this lecture, we will review the osseous, articular and muscular structures of the foot complex. First, we will review the osseous structures. The foot is made up of the tarsus, which includes the talus, calcaneus, navicular, cuboid, cuneiform bones, the metatarsal bones, and the phalangeal bones. Additionally, the big toe typically has sesamoid bones that are located on the distal underside of the first metatarsal. In the longitudinal or sagittal plane, the foot can be divided into three regions. The rear foot, consisting of the talus and calcaneus, the midfoot, incorporating all of the tarsal bones, and the forefoot, which is composed of the metatarsals, phalanges, and sesamoid bones. In the medial to lateral or transverse plane, the forefoot can be divided into the medial column and the lateral column. The medial column consists of rays 1, 2, and 3, with a ray defined as the metatarsal and related phalanges. The lateral column is composed of rays 4 and 5. Each toe, with the exception of the big toe, has a proximal phalangeal bone closest to the metatarsals, a distal phalangeal bone which forms the tip of the toe, and an interphalangeal bone interposed between the two. The big toe only has a proximal phalanx and a distal phalanx. These bones articulate at hinge joints which allow limited flexion and extension of the toes. The sesamoid bones in the foot are embedded within the flexor hallucis brevis tendon, which they protect and increase its movement. The first metatarsal has two sesamoid bones at its distal end. Next, we will review the articular structures. The intertarsal joints consist of the subtalar joint, the talocalcaneo navicular joint, the calcaneo cuboid joint, the cuneo navicular joint, the intercuneiform joint, and the cuneo cuboid joint. Beginning at the rear foot, the calcaneus has a multifaceted structure that allows for bone articulations and soft tissue attachments. The lateral facet of the calcaneus articulates with the cuboid, forming a plain synovial joint surrounded by a fibrous capsule. Strong ligaments, including the short plantar ligament, the long plantar ligament, the bifurcate ligament, and the dorsal calcaneocuboid ligament, stabilize this articulation to allow supinated weight bearing and foot strike without displacing the joint. Damage to these ligaments can cause cuboid subluxation or dislocation. On the superior aspect of the calcaneus, the posterior facet forms the major articulation with the talus and the floor of the subtalar joint. The ligamentous support of the subtalar joint has been covered in the lecture on the ankle complex and won't be repeated here. Moving on to the midfoot, the talocalcaneo navicular joint is a synovial ball and socket joint between the head and inferior surface of the neck of the talus, the posterior concave surface of the navicular, and the calcaneus. It is surrounded by a thin, loose, fibrous capsule which is lined by a synovial membrane. The talocalcaneal and talonavicular parts are supported by a network of ligaments. The dorsal talonavicular ligament, the spring ligament, and the bifurcate ligament. In the cuneonavicular joint, the navicular bone, the three cuneiform bones, and the cuboid are connected by the dorsal, plantar, and interosseous tarsal ligaments. The intercuneiform joint lies between the three cuneiforms, and the term cuneocuboid joint is sometimes used to describe the joint between the cuboid and the lateral cuneiform. However, this term is not recognised by the International Standard on Human Anatomical Terminologies. Distal to the intertarsal joints are the tarsometatarsal joints, each of which are synovial plane joints with one degree of freedom and articulations between the four distal tarsals including the three cuneiforms and cuboid, and the basis of the five metatarsals. The tarsometatarsal joints are supported by the dorsal, plantar, and interosseous tarsometatarsal ligaments. Distal to the tarsometatarsal joints are the metatarsophalangeal joints, a series of synovial condyloid joints with two degrees of freedom 
and articulations between the five metatarsal heads and the basis of the proximal phalanxes. The metatarsophalangeal joints are supported by the collateral ligaments, the plantar ligaments and the deep transverse metatarsal ligament. The final group of joints are the interphalangeal joints, which are synovial hinge joints with one degree of freedom. These articulate between the head of the proximal phalanxes and the bases of each distal phalanx. We will finish with the muscular structures, of which there are many. The muscles of the foot are a group of muscles that both originate from and insert into structures within the foot. They are involved in the fine motor movements of the foot. For descriptive purposes, the muscles of the foot are divided into two distinct groups. The muscles of the dorsum of the foot and the muscles of the plantar part of the foot. The muscles of the dorsum of the foot consist of the extensor digitorum brevis and the extensor hallucis longus. The extensor digitorum brevis is responsible for extension of the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the related digits, while the extensor hallucis longus dorsiflexes the talocrural joint and extends the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the first digit. It also supports the subtalar joint during pronation and supination. The muscles of the plantar part of the foot lie along the plantar surface of the foot and act on all five toes, producing flexion, abduction and adduction movements. For descriptive purposes, the muscles of the foot are divided into four distinct layers. From superficial to deep, they are the first, second, third and fourth layer of muscles of the plantar part of the foot. The first layer is the most superficial layer. The muscles in this layer act on the first to fifth toes, producing flexion at their metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints and abduction at the metatarsophalangeal joints of the first and fifth toes, in other words, the big and little toes respectively. The first layer of muscles of the plantar part of the foot consist of the abductor hallucis, abductor digiti minimi, and flexor digitorum brevis. The abductor hallucis flexes and abducts the hallux and supports the longitudinal arch of the foot. Abductor digiti minimi abducts the fifth digit and flexes the metatarsophalangeal joint of the fifth digit. Flexor digitorum brevis is responsible for flexion of the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the second to fifth digits. Next, the second layer of the muscles at the plantar aspect of the foot act on the second to fifth toes, producing flexion at their metatarsophalangeal joints and extension at their interphalangeal joints. The second layer of muscles consists of quadratus plantae and the lumbricals. The quadratus plantae assists the flexor digitorum longus in flexion of the toes, while the lumbricals act on the second to fifth digits, producing flexion at their metatarsophalangeal joints and extension at their interphalangeal joints. From medial to lateral, the lumbricals are numbered 1 to 4. The third layer of muscles act on the first and fifth toes, i.e. the big and little toes respectively, producing flexion at their metatarsophalangeal joints and abduction at their metatarsophalangeal joint of the first toe. The third layer of muscles of the plantar part of the foot consist of flexor hallucis brevis, adductor hallucis and flexor digiti minimi brevis. The flexor hallucis brevis is responsible for flexion of the metatarsophalangeal joint of the first digit. The adductor hallucis adducts the first toe, or the big toe, at the first metatarsophalangeal joint. For descriptive purposes, the adductor hallucis is divided into two heads, its oblique head and transverse head. And the final muscle in the third layer is the flexor digiti minimi brevis of the foot which flexes the metatarsophalangeal joint of the fifth digit.
Now, the fourth and final layer of muscles at the plantar aspect of the foot. This is the deepest layer of the four muscle layers. The muscles in this layer act on the second to fourth toes, producing flexion, abduction, and adduction at their metatarsophalangeal joints. The fourth layer of muscles of the plantar part of the foot are divided into two groups, the dorsal and plantar interossei. The dorsal interossei muscles act on the second to fourth toes, producing abduction and flexion at their metatarsophalangeal joints. From medial to lateral, they are numbered one to four. And the final subgroup of muscles in the fourth layer are the plantar interossei, which are labelled 1 to 3 and act on the second to fourth toes, producing adduction and flexion at their metatarsophalangeal joints. And that concludes this lecture on the osseous articular and muscular structures of the foot. Please refer to your additional notes, which provide all the information you require around the origins, insertions and innervations of these muscles, in addition to the supporting connective tissue of the foot. This lecture was prepared for students enrolled in the physiotherapy program in the UCD School of Public Health, Physiotherapy and Sports Science. In this lecture, we reviewed the osseous, articular and muscular structures of the foot complex. Images were taken from the Complete Anatomy software application prepared by 3D4 Medical.